John here, obviously. And uh, what I'm showing you here is a sheet on the floor with nettles spread out all over it. Now, I was out collecting nettles today, and um, I just wanted to show you, because a lot of people in this class I was doing was asking about drying them, so I just want to show you how we dry them. Now, we I dry them a certain way because I live in a pretty wet area. It's even drizzling a bit today. I know people always say, you know, don't gather your herbs out in the rain and all that, but sometimes where I live in the spring, if you're not going to gather when it's a little misty out, you're probably not going to get anything. So, uh, anyway, I gathered uh, the nettles and I showed in another video on how to pick them and just the, the tops, the first couple of sections there you see on these different uh, nettles and uh, basically I'm laying them out on the sheet overnight for a day and that's just because it will not only just evaporate any of the water that's on them but also um, it will wilt them a bit so the water weight, a lot of the water weight will go away but it'll still have its vitality and then we're going to move it from a to a dehydrator from here and when we come back in the next part I'll talk a little bit more about different ways you can dry them if say if you don't have a dehydrator. Okay but I just want to show you that first section here just laying them out in a sheet which you may want to do no matter where you live. Um, fits in the dehydrator or any drying apparatus you're using a little better. Okay. Okay, so it's the next day and I uh, use my gloves here and I got some trays from my dehydrator. Um, now, just before I talk a bit about that, I just want you to show you how much water weight went, how much these um, went down in size and, and all. This is because I, was, I did this, I'm able to put them in my dehydrator and they take up a lot less room um, on your drying racks or dehydrators. Um, as you're as you're drying it, so just doing this, and it also just kind of initial water off of there and everything, and so they're just uh, spread out here. Now here's here's the thing: um, you don't need a fancy dehydrator. Uh, like I'm, I live in a wet climate, so uh, we kind of need something like this in our house if we're going to do a larger amount of nettles. I also know people around here that don't have dehydrators but have like big drying racks they keep near their uh, wood stoves that they set up. So I've seen that too. Um, you can simply get a, a screen, um, a window screen, um, a, a flat basket. I've gotten a couple of those at thrift stores. Um, you know, as long as you have something that can get air underneath it and by a heat source, they'll dry. And if you live in a really dry area, uh, you might not even need a heat source. Just something to make sure the air is circulating uh, uh, through it. Um, I also, at this point, if I wanted to, and I had a smaller amount, uh, I could put I could put put these in a couple of paper bags and in 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 a couple of paper grocery bags if I wanted to, and I could put them on top of the refrigerator and I could shake or something like that and I could shake them around a few times a day. Um, I don't always remember to do that, and you have a bigger risk of them molding. But I have a friend who does that uh, successfully. Sometimes people uh, just build their own little drying racks with screens or, you know, you can make something like this with some mesh and so a wood frame and put uh, like a lamp, like a heat lamp underneath it and kind of build their own. There's lots of ways uh, to to build a drying rack. So all I'm going to do here, I'm going to take these in and just show you my dehydrator in here. Actually, the light's going to change here a bit because I just put this work light on in here because it's dark in here. Uh, so what I have here is this um, drying dehydrator here. I, mean, was, if, I think if you just Google dry it, you'll like it. Um, these folks in Ball City uh, actually sell the parts, they even sell the plans. You can just buy the plans online and build them yourself from a hardware store. But uh, this is one of their units. Um, I have my wine sitting up there um, from last season. Uh, I was keeping it warm in there. Uh, so I'm going to go and I uh, just wanted to show you this and I'm going to fill this up with the three screens. Alright, so I'm back here and you see these three screens in here filled with nettles. I'm just going to pop that in there and I'm going to turn the dial on here on a low heat. And um, Okay, I'm just going to close that up on this dehydrator. 
Well, I don't know if you can see back there, you know, it's in me sure there's some space for the air, moist air to get out. And I was making sure that it's plugged in, so I'm good to go. Um, and one thing I will say here as you're drying is an important thing is uh, when you're drying flowers or drying leafy plants or whatever, uh, you know, start out, if you don't know yet, on a low setting. And as long as there's heat under there and it's circulating through, it won't mold or anything. It may not get totally dry, but that's for you to experiment on whatever kind of drying system you do to make sure that there's air getting through, that there's no clumps in here. Okay, the air has got to keep circulating through. And then if it's not getting quite dry enough, I can just raise the heat a little. But what you don't want to do is put the heat on too high. Because especially if you're drawing flowers and all, you can really burn them to a crisp and then you're all that hard work it's you lose that so you want to take care of the plants you pick and make sure you're drying them and take care of them processing them all carefully out of respect to the plants and in respect to your, your time and energy that you take to pick these um and uh but hey if you make a mistake and do that then you've learned and you just don't do it again and every mistake is an educational experience <laughs> there aren't any mistakes okay so uh, we'll take a look after they're dry so you can see what they should look like all right um it's the next day and, and since i had a dehydrator this is gonna dry pretty quick sorry for the harsh lighting there um so basically you can see this is really crisp and i can just crumble in my fingers if i wanted a garble it up between my hands and and um and if you want to do that being their nettles you'd want to do that with gloves on of course because there could be a little sting here and there and it'll get a little irritable anyway but if you have some of that nice hand salve that you made you can put that on after anyway so what i'm going to do here is uh, take this uh paper bag here and um uh, gonna put all this in here here's another uh, bag that was filled with uh, nettles that's uh, taped shut. Um, usually duct tape's actually a little easier because it opens and closes easier than this tape. This must be what Kimberly found. Maybe she doesn't know where the duct tape is. I don't know. So uh, I'll just store something like this on the shelf with nettles since nettles is something we, we gather a lot of. Um, however, if you just had enough to fill a jar for some, you can just put this right in a jar and this jar could go right up on your shelf in the kitchen out of sun direct sunlight. Um, but why we put it in these bags is because, um, well, it keeps it dry. Um, and uh, if I use plastic, there's a better chance that it could mold if there's any moisture really left in there. And, uh, of course, keeps the sunlight out while well, I'm in a dark garage anyway. Um, <laughs> but anyway, it's something that's easy that you have. Probably it's free that you have in your household that you could easily... Um, that you could easily store uh, your herbs in um, if you have lots, you know, like I said, if you just have enough that you collected that fills a jar up, just put it in the jar and that's great. But it's something like nettles where we we um, end up with uh, several bags like this dried by the end of the nettle season that we use all the way through. And how long will all this last? Well, gosh, this will be used in less than nine months probably, or if maybe even six months, our own nettle stash will go pretty quick in our infusions. Um, but other herbs, a leafy green like this, um, will have a shelf life of like a year or so um, before you really want to replace it. So, you know, if, if there's a leaf, if there's, if there's greens that you're not going to use lots and lots of, you really don't need to gather this much. Um, so, but hey, in your first year and all, um, who knows, you know, you, you just, you, when you're gathering stuff, you don't know until you do it. So just gather what you think and, um, give it a try and, um, see how that all works. But anyway, this is just a real, how to really simply, um, dry your nettles. And, um, what well, I hope this was helpful for you. And of course you can ask some questions over in the forum if, if this didn't answer um, all of your burning nettle drying questions. Okay, thanks.